So life is filled with surprises. I didn't tell you about this part because I didn't know if you would actually show up. But we have a special spotlight feature this evening. What? Oh yeah. Because we're, we're coming back with Manifest Destiny. He's our real feature, but sometimes a poet so motherfucking cool just kind of shows up in your town. And you're like, what the fuck are you going to get on our stage until we made it happen? He is from the Bay Area of California. He's been to like 97 National Poetry Slams because he's old as fuck. One of my favorite poets, one of my favorite goddamn people. So let's make a shitload of noise and welcome him up. Give it up for Lee Knight Jr. Applaud, applaud, applaud! awesome poets I've known since day one and ten years we've been doing this forever and I only have one chapbook left and when I came to Portland I thought I gotta bring one for Aaron well, so, else likes it more. <laughs> no I'm not selling it it's for you no 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 however you can find me on YouTube or just ask me on a Sunday for free now I only got three poems and I don't have time and it's cold as fuck here but I love the way you guys vote, by the way. Thank you very much. Right. Dude, you guys really came through, so right on. Um, by the way, my name is Nate. And let's start with something that I got memorized. So you're like, he knows his shit. <laughs> and by the way, my best friend here, Melissa, she's going to close for me. <clears throat> I was born 10 pounds, 9 ounces. Always chunky, husky, heavy, big bone. In elementary school, being good at kickball and four squares saved me from playground cruelty until Shelly Gray pointed at me and said, Lee, do you want to borrow my training bra? I was 5'5", 180, 38-inch waistband in the fifth grade. PE was a torture chamber from the French Revolution. Iron Maiden push-ups, guillotine pull-up bars, and running laps around the rack. It was then I accepted what everyone whispered. I was fat. And I began to believe that no one was ever gonna want me. At 19, I was built average. Inside, I still felt fat. When I saw my future wife at Club Glam Slam in Yokohama, Japan, I stood 6'3", 180 amongst military brothers and wealthy Japanese businessmen, spoke in conversation against the amber lights of the city, wound-sized souls and wallet-sized hearts, dancing and drinking just to find something better. I saw her looking at a reflection in the city lights. She was the most beautiful woman I had ever seen in a dress so red, it made pink blush. I tried not to stare with a twist of her head, our eyes locked like dreads, and one smart smile made me forget that I didn't have a chance. My Japanese broken, her English splintered, our conversation complete. We danced a princess, the beautiful ones, and she told me her name was Keiko, Japanese for firefly child. I told her, I've never seen the firefly but I held her until lights dimmed in today, and we were wet one year later. And for the next seven years, we shared the things that the young people are meant to share. Passion, laughter, good skin, and emotional codependency. As a symbol of our rebellious commitment towards one another, we got matching Japanese tattoos, Zuto, for forever. As if saying it wasn't enough. We languished over insecurities and bitter too deep to remove without making new scars. But mine were bigger than the both of us. A fat boy conditioned to run and hide and inventing excuses to misunderstand the word stay. Building walls so it's easier to say goodbye. He bid farewell to forever and I kept the kanji when I said it's over. And I can't speak for everyone, but some of us hold on to, on, on to our insecurities so tightly we feel its impression even we thought we let go. Never feeling good enough, strong, tall, smart enough. Doubt grows into a shadow that holds you like a marionette, pulling your weaknesses at a whim. But we live with it, finding security, finally finding security in insecurity, like children trading in dragons and spaceships for sports heroes in cars. And we settle on her or him. Everyone around you saying you deserve much better. Your inner child whispering like a nightlight, this is the best I can get. Like cuts you ignore until there's scars every year. Your past mistakes become easier to see. We reach for the unattainable, fall for the incorrigible, ignoring the incredible right in front of us, only seeing reasons why they shouldn't love us because I'm fat and I'm ugly, I'm skinny, and nobody wants me. Scared of being exposed, of being mistaken for yourself. Collecting relationships like bus tickets on your road to anywhere, trying to find yourself, but you never left. 
feeling so broken you only look for fault in others. Shattering relationships, putting yourself back together while somebody else falls apart. The only way for any of us to see the beauty within our, anyone, sorry, is to first see within ourselves. She was the first woman to say to me the words, I love you and forever in the same breath. She used to smile at me and mean it. A runway model that winked at me when she turned the tea and I couldn't tell her she was beautiful. I wasn't man enough to see past my own childhood. So three years after our divorce was final, I called her. And after 10 minutes of newsletter briefs that we used to live in eyewitness, I told her, I am sorry. We were married seven years, and I must have told you I loved you a thousand times, but I never told you you were beautiful. And that's not because I didn't think you were. It's because I couldn't make myself believe that I deserved you. When I look in the mirror, I see a fat boy who needs a training bra and who no one is ever going to want. I know I don't need to tell you this, but I still have to say it. Keiko, you are beautiful. I always thought so since the night we met. Her voice cracked into a spark with the words, Thank you. When we first met, I wasn't looking at my reflection. I was looking at you. Lee, did you finally see a firefly? The fat boy inside whispered, no, but I know I can catch one. Before he said goodbye. <laughs>